Miracle I Found. Uh, this is Bob Amaral, and Bob and I have some history, don't we? We have a lot of history. Yeah, we, and you live out here, you live in Boulder or Denver? I live in Broomfield, which is 20 minutes uh, north of I have no idea Denver. where that is. Yeah. Uh, but Bob is a big mini guy, um, or a little mini guy. No, big, <laughs> yeah, big mini guy. I'm pretty little. And, uh, and I said that uh, we were coming out to see this collection, and then Bob said, uh, hey, I'm living right there. I'm gonna come by hang out just to say hello did you have you seen been to this place before oh yeah three okay. or four times oh this is your hangout no we've been here as a club a couple of times yeah and i've been here on my own a couple of times yeah so. and what are you driving now what's your car my car is a 1964 austin mini countryman tell me you got it here wagon yes i do <laughs> it's okay. a woody it's okay. a woody <laughs> of course it is <laughs> i've um, always got a woody what right. a lucky guy <laughs> it's good to see you man you look good Good to see you too. Yeah, it looks like you're living the life out here. I'm glad you're happy. Always. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Look at what, look what we're doing. Do what you love, love what you do. That's right. That's yeah. right. Every day. That's my motto. Huh? <laughs> It's basically a full-size die-cast. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Okay. That's my car. We're in Bob's car in the in the mini. Oh, what year, dear. What year is this? Austin. 64. 64. And um, we're gonna drive way over about like 20 yards to the other mini. If I can find my keys. Yeah. John, um, what do you think of this Audi, man? Drives pretty good. It's nice that it's Christian's car. We can pretty much go anywhere we want, yeah. do whatever we want. Eat on it as well. Yeah, you know, we should go like rob a bank or something and, you know, just park it outside. Yeah. Christian, I've got a phone call. So we're heading to Steve Engman, super friendly guy, mm -hmm. um, and he's a curator for Hobby DB as right. well as a member of the Model Car Hall. Right. So, yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. And as a reminder, uh, Hobby DB, which is the whole purpose of why we're here in Boulder, Colorado, you guys got to check those guys out. Check out the website, it's hobbydb.com, right? Well, number one place for the collectibles market. If you want to buy or sell or trade or do anything that has to do with collectibles, that's the place to go. So you guys got to check that out. And while you're doing that, we're going to go check out these diecast collections. Yep. somewhere outside of Boulder in a small town. These are promotional models. You guys are familiar with, with some of the promo models that car companies have used over the years to sell cars when they didn't have dealerships that could hold all the cars. So they have little promo models. This dude right here, he's got a wicked cool collection. This right here, you think that's a lot? <laughs> Not even. This dude is off the chart. Let's go talk to him. This is Steve, my new best friend, because you have an incredible collection of these promo models. Uh, this is not a small collection. How many do you have? I don't know, on display, maybe a thousand. Okay. But why these cars? You know, I mean, some people it's Hot Wheels, some people it's Corgis. Why these cars for you? These are actually the history, part of the history of the car. They yeah. were made for the manufacturers to help this car, sell the cars when they were new. Yeah. And was it was it primarily because dealerships were too small and they couldn't have all the cars? No, that was one of the many reasons. Yeah. I mean, they used it for a lot of different occasions, but 
but in you know a lot of small town dealers wouldn't have room for a lot of cars on the showroom floor so they could order in for example in the early 50s chevy made just about every model and mm -hmm. uh, uh, many of the what colors. What was the a average amount of colors? Uh, I don't know. Back in the 50s, maybe 15, 20. Mm. Um, and of course, yeah. as years went by, that narrowed down yeah. quite a bit. That's a lot of models for you, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your first one? Uh, no, the firecrackers took care of that. <laughs> But that's, that's why they are valuable yeah. because yeah. everybody, I was no different than everybody else. They got broken. You know, a yeah. toy is a terrible thing to give a kid. Yeah. And uh, Well, how old were you when you got your first one? Uh, I got a real crude one in 1957, so I was four. Yeah. And uh, I got my first detailed one, a dealer. That was uh, it. So what, is, what is the Holy Grail car? What's the one car that would be the... Uh, either you have it, you don't, but it's the one car everyone would be searching would love to have. Well, recently, um, the 1969 Mach 1 promo has been very, very sought after. Mm -hmm. the, um, there's one that sold on eBay for over $4,700 recently. 67 Corvette is another sought after car. 66 uh, a Plymouth Valiant, believe it or not, is one of the most sought after. It was... Um, I guess the model company didn't want to make it, but Chrysler uh, insisted that they make a short run, so they, they were speculated they made as few as 200 of those, mm -hmm. and uh, very, very uncommon. Do you have those cars? I, I have them. Um, I did have a 66 Valiant, but someone offered me such stupid money, <laughs> I had to let it go. Yeah. But this one is unusual. This was given to Del Webb. Are you familiar with Del Webb? Del Webb was one that, that made Sun City. He did uh, a lot of housing developments, and he owned the Yankees. He, uh, I mean, he owned a lot. But in 1964, he had an Indy race team, and Ford presented this very car to him. He gave it to his photographer, and then I got it from his wow. photographer. This, um, this 69 Mach 1 is the one that sold recently, like it, for $4,700. The one with the stripes or the regular one? The regular one. Okay. This, well, these Corvettes, uh, they get very valuable. This is a 67 Corvette, which is um, pretty valuable. I, I noticed in one of the magazines they had mentioned it in the auction results that one went for over $2,500. Um, this is the original 53 Corvette, which has very low value. They made a lot of them. Which, which one is your most valuable? Not, not monetarily, but sentiment, sentimentally. Perhaps uh, just because we own the real cars, the 63 Mercury Meteor, and the promo was so very rare that uh, I really, I, I like that. Do you have that car? Yes. Uh -huh. Let's see that. Hey, well, I'm just going to spend some time looking at these models and show you guys a little bit more. But thank you, man. That was you really bet. great stuff. Anytime. Very cool. Next up, it's lunchtime. We're gonna to go to Native Foods because it's good. We both know that. We're gonna go pick up Christian. What did you like uh, earlier today? Between the I Shelby mean, collection and the uh, other stuff we saw. I mean, the Shelby collection blew me away. You know, I don't know what I was expecting exactly because I had never been, but it would have beat any expectation that I had. Ah, uh, it's tremendous. Yeah, to yeah. see, you know, the earliest ones as well as the Sunbeam that predates. You can almost season. barely process what you're looking at. Yeah, you know, it was, there's so it much was sensory overload. You know, the smell of rubber and oil there. 
Perfect. Okay, we had lunch. I didn't vlog that because, you know, you can only show many people eating so many times. You know, uh, but we're having a good time. And lo and behold, someone has appeared. It's kind of like a head on a popsicle stick. This is Alex. She is the genius behind the marketing for HobbyDB. Uh, in fact, probably smarter than all of us combined. <laughs> no. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's true, John, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so now we're going back to HobbyDB to, to their... Um, uh, how do you describe this building? Uh, we call it Tatooine. Yeah, it's it's a total sci-fi building. You guys are going to dig this. Uh, but sci-fi from the 70s. So I guess Tatooine does make sense. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are going to like this. Uh, we'll check out more about what these guys do and meet some more people and, and play with some die-cast toys, right? Absolutely. Okay. These guys are experts, unbelievable people here at HobbyDB who, uh, uh, they're gonna change your lives. If you're a collector on anything, they're building something and have built something that is gonna blow your mind and we're gonna get more into it. But uh, you guys enjoying yourself? Yeah. Yeah. They're a little sleepy, what am I gonna say? These books are what we call data donations. We're allowed to take them and digitize them. So all the information that you find in here See, unfortunately, part of digitization is that we have to cut them. But all that information here will go into HobbyDB as database entries. Right. So HobbyDB is a, is a database for all things collectible. That's correct. This is Ron's collection when he was a kid, about a couple years ago. Yeah, just a few years ago. Yeah, those are all uh, buried in the sandbox at some point. And, uh, Did you have to pull the metal detector out just to find them? No, no. I, luckily, I dug them up each, you know, once a week or so. Yeah. So this is all you had? There's no, I don't oh no, know. there's more. This are uh, the cars that were inducted in the Model Car Hall of Fame last year. First row, 164 scale, and then here the winner in the class is the Fiat 500 Modificado. Uh, there's a Gazzo 4000, which is one of my favorites, Aero Coupe, and this year is the little, it's called the little bugger. It's, it's a set that you could buy and change your Beetle into a camper van. That's cool, that's the winner. That's the winner in this class. One of my favorites, Mrs. Mira, but this is the outer cold brand powder, and I don't know if you story of this. This was a French advertising company and they came up with this concept of German French Corporation. You can see it's a 911 in the front and the Suchern in the back. And uh, they put this on yes, advertising boards all over France saying we should work more with the Germans. Nobody notices this doesn't have an engine because <laughs> the Porsche's engine in the back and Citroen's engine in the front. Maybe it's electric. Maybe. <laughs> My name is Christian. I'm ultimately responsible for documenting 100 billion collectibles on HobbyDB. HobbyDB is a database of every collectible ever made. And in it, you can find out what exists, who made it, how much is it worth, you can add it to your collection, 
you can add it to your wish list, or you can buy and sell items. HobbyDB came out of two reasons. One was I added something to Wikipedia and somebody else removed it as not notable. The other thing that I made me sad was uh, I collect Lone Star, British Diecast and the Size from the 60s. There were three websites that had everything you ever want to know about those. And all three of them died. They're gone. The author disappeared, had lost interest, saw his collection. There was some reason. So I wanted to build a database that has every collectible ever in it. We believe there are 100 billion collectibles out there. For example, we've now documented 45,000 Hot Wheels. And while that's about 99% of the stuff that you see out there in the world, it's probably only 20% of what exists. Um, I'm probably now most interested in space toys from the 50s and earlier. Collecting has changed a lot because it's so easy to find stuff. So I think you, you want to find something that is a little bit harder to find and that's a little more, you know, we I have a collection of totem poles and try to find those. You know, you go to an antique shop and you ask them, they don't know if they have any. Um, you collect Hot Wheels, it is the easiest thing in the world. You, know, you go to Hobby DB, you can buy them all. Uh, my grandmother worked for a comic book company when I was a kid, so that was sort of a big deal for me. Uh, my father worked on the assembly line at Rambler back in the 60s, so uh, there was a lot of car culture uh, in our house. So I had a lot, of, a lot of fun things as far as comics and toys. One of my favorite toys was the uh, Smash Up Derby cars from uh, Kenner, the SSP, Supersonic Power. I had a collection of about 75 of these cars. Some of them mint condition, some of them played with condition. Um, I also have a case of my original Hot Wheels cars from when I was a kid. Uh, so the case and the cars in it. Um, they're probably not worth that much as they've been buried in the sandbox, stepped on, modified, painted over. They're, they're not in great shape, most of them, but they're uh, tremendously valuable to me. The life-size statue of Big Boy in my house, uh, I have a Schwinn Stingray hanging on the wall. It's a lot of fun stuff. One of the fun things about working at HobbyDB is people ask, what do you do? I say, well, I, I write for a website about toys and collectibles. So I write weekly columns about Hot Wheels or bobbleheads or you know, action figures or lunch boxes. Uh, so that's, that's a lot of fun. And, and you have a mascot. Yes. Wolf. Bailey. <laughs> uh, so right now I'm working on uh, revamping some of our uh, websites that we've uh, acquired over the past few years, the Toy Collector Hall of Fame and the uh, Model Car Hall of Fame, rewriting some of the old articles to get them more up to uh, our standards. And I also do a lot of Facebook and uh, other social media. Um, so that's, that's always kind of fun, just, oh, what am I going to post about today? And I go through the catalog and uh, sort of get caught in the rabbit hole sometimes of, oh, hey, here's an action figure I didn't know about, and then click on the related links, and pretty soon I've wasted a bunch of time doing fun things. <laughs> it can be fun, I and mean, this office is a pretty cool building, too. We call it tattooing. It looks like the uh, Luke Skywalker's home. Um, actually, from above, it looks more like the Millennium Falcon, so do a Google search on it. It's pretty neat. Day to day in my marketing role is making sure that I'm connecting with collectors and communicating with them about all the great stuff that is happening at HobbyDB. We're trying to provide a resource that basically will make their passion so much easier and so much more enjoyable because it's a collection management resource and they can also buy and sell their items whenever they're ready to either add to their collection or take it, you know, if they've done, and usually collectors, you know, at some point decide to move on to another hobby and so they'll sell their items too. So we try to make it as easy as possible. The two best things about working here, our team is top notch. They're amazing people. Almost all of us have a collection of something, so we really can identify with collectors. And then the other part is working with collectors. They're passionate people who love their items and who love their collectibles, and so it's really cool to be able to give them a tool to help out with that. I heard that you juggle ducks. I do. I do. Yeah, I'm not very good at it, but I can. You gotta see that. <laughs> wow, she's pretty good, actually. That wasn't bad. <laughs>